Welcome, 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 one and all, to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. Look. Look, folks, uh, if you watch the show, and I hope you do, uh, I give the president a lot of the business. You know, I hit him with the zingers. But it's, uh, it's nice when you see good things happen in Trump's America. For instance, early this morning, the three American hostages freed by North Korea landed safely in the United States. Yeah, yeah. That's great news. Welcome home. Welcome you gotta home. give it up. Welcome home. When good things happen, you gotta give it up. The uh, president was there to meet the freed men, along with Melania, who is hoping to be freed next. <laughs> it's too long. Too long. Trump made some brief remarks, pretty simple. All he had to do was not thank the murderous dictator who had imprisoned these men in a windowless black hole. I want to thank Kim Jong-un, who really uh, was excellent to these three incredible people. No, he wasn't. <laughs> he wasn't excellent to them. And you know the hint that he wasn't? They look happy to be with you. <laughs> okay? That's how low the bar is. You don't negotiate the release of people from an excellent situation. <laughs> don't worry, we're sending in SEAL Team 6 to extract you from that all-inclusive beach vacation. <laughs> and Trump was not done praising these hostages' kidnapper right in front of them, this time because Kim let them go before his meeting with Mike Pompeo. And he was nice in letting him go before the meeting. I mean, frankly, we didn't think this was going to happen, and it did. Coincidentally, that's also what it says beneath Trump's official portrait. <laughs> did not know. He didn't know. Nope. He couldn't know. They're eventually going to carve his head on Mount Oopsadaisy. <laughs> of course, no Trump accomplishment would be complete without a little bragging about ratings. I want to thank you all. It's very early in the morning. Uh, I think you probably broke the all-time in history television rating for 3 o'clock in the morning, that I would say. Yes, that is how history judges all presidential accomplishments. <laughs> Did it do better than an infomercial for Slap Chop? <laughs> some, some are attributing this diplomatic victory to Trump's plan to out-crazy North Korea. Thanks for releasing the hostages, Kim. Now I'm sending them back. Didn't see that coming. <laughs> All right? I've been eating paint chips. <laughs> Trump... Trump is fond of saying that every other U.S. president was predictable, which let their adversaries run rings around them. Yeah, Obama was so predictable when he killed Osama bin Laden instead of surprising the world by thanking him. And, reportedly, Trump is all in on the cray-cray. No one knows what I'm gonna do. They are over there trying right now to analyze every statement I'm putting out to get a sense of what's going to happen. Yes, we are. <laughs> also, North Korea is, but... Mostly us. <laughs> Adding, but the fact of the matter is, nobody knows. Least of all me, my negotiating team is a Ouija board and that raccoon that picks Super Bowl winners. <laughs> of course, of course, some raccoon fans here. <laughs> Rabies vector. If, if Kim Jong-un wants insight into the president, maybe he should hire Trump lawyer and man being politely asked to leave the strip club. <laughs> Michael Cohen, yesterday I told you that Cohen took money from a Russian oligarch and corporations like AT&T and Novartis, but that's just the tip of the briberg. <laughs> According to one GOP strategist, right after the presidential inauguration, Cohen was cold-calling people and saying, I don't know who's been representing you, but you should fire them all. I'm the guy you should hire. I'm closest to the president. I'm his personal lawyer. That was pretty bald influence peddling. He was slightly more subtle when he bought the ad bench in front of the White House. <laughs> part of the reason, 
part of the reason he was so blunt in his cash grab is that Cohen really wanted a position in the White House, but he didn't get a White House position at the urging of Ivanka and Jared Kushner, who explained, hey, being unqualified as a White House staffer, that's kind of our thing. <laughs> but what's Cohen supposed to do? Not cash in on knowing the president? So he reached out to the private sector, telling potential clients how frequently the two spoke, and even showed photos of himself with Trump. Here's me and Mr. Trump. Uh, here's the Secret Service pulling me away from Mr. Trump. They're good guys. They even have a code name for me. It's, how did you get in here? <laughs> and Cohen had a real opportunity. As one lobbyist explains, everyone said Trump won't win. Everyone had all of these Hillary consultants lined up and realized when Trump won, they had nobody. Now, a lot of people were wrong about that election. That's why I hastily hired my consultant, Mr. Daniels. <laughs> he has a lot of influence, and I am frequently under it. <laughs> Have that put in a safe place. And it wasn't just Cohen. So, as one GOP consultant put it, Everyone was hiring Trump whisperers in 2017. A Trump whisperer is like a dog whisperer because, uh, well, there's a lot of indoor peeing and hitting with rolled up magazines. <laughs> anyway. <laughs>